Now, new research shows a rapid acceleration by middle market companies in adopting world capital solutions, with some companies experiencing a 300% year-on-year increase in efficiency because of savings of interest and fees. 300% is a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The findings are revealed in Visa's second annual middle market growth corporate working capital index, for which it spoke to nearly, get this, 1,300 chief financial officers and treasurers across eight industry segments, 23 countries. No small numbers there. And to look at the research in more detail, we're joined by Darren Parslow, global head of Visa Commercial Solutions at Visa. Welcome, Darren. It's great to have you back on Cybus TV. Now, yes. I know you announced uh, your second annual Middle Market Growth Corporate's Working Capital Index today. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. So you mentioned that we uh, we surveyed 1,300 companies, 23 countries, eight industry segments, and we found some really interesting results. Um, I think that with the current rate environment and the current environment in general in business, uh, companies are... Ch- the, are moving towards working capital solutions and digitized working mm-hmm. capital solutions more than they ever have. And that's the 300% efficiency that we saw last year. You know, these transformations are are really incredible. Why do you think middle market CFOs and treasurers are adopting these um, working capital solutions at such a rapid clip? Yeah. So you have to go back to the demographics, right? So in the next two years, of our workforce are going to be Gen Z or millennials. Mm -hmm. And that means your, your procurement officers, your treasurers are going to be Gen Z or millennials. And they know one form factor and that's digital (laughs) and that's mobile. And so that it is, it's transforming the way that they operate their financial lives and their business lives. And that's why we're seeing this rapid adoption of digitized solutions and working capital. How do you think the reduction of the U.S. Fed rate is going to impact the cost of, of capital over over the coming year? And will it make uh, capital more or less of a critical tool, do you think? Yeah. So, look, you know, a half a basis point or a half a percentage point reduction uh, won't make it down to growth, growth corporates in the next 12 months. We will still need working capital. But what's more interesting is that because we've been in a high rate environment for so long, we've trained corporates to use digitized solutions in a way that is not going to go away. And so like the, the power of digitized working and working capital solutions is here to stay. And what's interesting is corporates are much more optimistic now in in the survey for the next 12 months because of the rate reduction. But honestly, the change is here to stay. Yeah. They're excited about the the Fed rate, but they're also excited about these virtual cards that we're seeing really adopting such an increase in usage. We're seeing, as you said, the Gen Z yeah. effect. But um, what makes them such a strategic tool, you think, for payments? Ease of use. Yeah. So we saw a 32% increase in virtual card adoption. Um, and it's because we can embed virtual cards into your normal daily life as either a procurement officer or as a treasurer or as a CFO into your ERP or your CRM systems. And so it's that ease of use that has made it such a, a compelling tool. Yeah. Visa's has talked a lot about the uh, the embedded finance within the B2B context. Like, can you tell me a little bit about the trends that you guys are seeing and how is Visa thinking about this space? Yeah. So embedded finance means something different to anyone you ask, right? So um, for us, embedded payments and embedded finance is really putting a secure tokenized credential into your normal daily working life in a way where if you're in your ERP system or if you're a supplier and you're in your CRM, your customer relation management system, you have a credential to make payments right away. Yeah. And so it's it's bringing working capital to your to your daily job in front of you instead of having to go and kind of break glass and go get a line of credit and a draw. And it's, it's right there. And so it, that's really what has been so compelling and why it's gone up 32%. Yeah. We've seen embedded finance really adopted in the consumerization space, yeah. less so in commercial. And I wonder why that is. Why are we seeing really this broader trend of the commer- commer- consumerization yeah, yeah, yeah. of B2B yeah. really ushering this new era of embedded yeah. finance? So consumerization of B2B is is a couple of things. One, it's the demographic sp- yeah, that shift that we just talked about. But two, and f- actually looking at the cybos floor this morning, you see hundreds of fintechs 
who are out looking for solutions to help treasury banks. And I would say that the treasury management systems and the treasury banks in general are one of the last bastions of, co of corporate banking that is to be digitized. And so it just, it took a while. We have a lot of legacy systems. We have a lot of ingrained processes, but now we have a lot of young people coming and changing all of that and a lot of fintechs coming and helping our system. And so I think you're seeing it just now, like last year and this year, it's really taking scale. Yeah. It's very exciting. It's incredible to see. What specific pain points and, and, and frictions can embedded finance within the commercial environments help eliminate and get rid of, do you think? Yeah. So uh, think of you're making a payment or you have accounts payable file. You want to reconcile all these files or your supplier and you've got receivables. You want to reconcile all your invoices. We now can do that on, on the spot, whereas before you had to go match an invoice to an email, you had to call your bank and get a draw up a line of credit. So we're just digitizing and making all of the processes simpler. And it's just bringing, frankly, it's bringing our industry up to where our consumer lives are, right? Mm -hmm. That's the consumerization of B2B. And, you know, I, I love this theme because we're really seeing uh, an intergenerational shift. And I want to talk about generative AI here. Yeah, yeah. How is that really changing things, making it easier for businesses really to access financial services? Yeah. So um, at Visa, we've been doing AI and, and machine learning for 30 years, right? But the advent of large learning models and generative AI is really foundationally transformative. So think of yourself as a business owner. When you can query a system, not using your fingers, you can just ask a system, what is my cash flow position? And by the way, what are your recommendations for what I should do next week? Wow. And you'll get recommendations. Yeah. On spot, a curated response based on your history, based on all the data that exists. Yeah. And we never had that access. And so it is literally going to transform business. It's the accumulated wisdom, all in generative AI. And, and, and precisely, precisely. So Darren Parzel, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Really yeah. appreciate it. Awesome. That Thanks, was Darren Parzlow, Global Head of Visa Commercial Solutions Visa. Thanks.